The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. Good evening everyone. My name is Ashay Arora and I'm a PhD student at Arizona State University. This is my first presentation at ACI, so if I faint, you know why. On a serious note, I'd like to thank uh, ACI for giving me this opportunity to present my research at this platform. I'll be presenting my research on hydration and strength development in ternary Portland cement blends containing limestone. The outline of my presentation, I'll be going over the introduction, material used and proportioning, microstructural modeling, discussing the experimental results, and finally conclusions. The current study is focused on ternary blends containing slag and interground or blended limestone. So we know that addition of limestone filler to clinker improves particle packing, provides initial acceleration by providing nucleation sites for the hydration reaction to occur, and also forms AFMC phase and delays the ettringite to AFM transformation. Now for slag, we know that it's pozzolonic as well as hydraulic. But due to its latent hydraulicity, it, it's a very little use by itself. And pozzolonic reaction of slag produces CSH uh, with a lower C2S ratio and a higher density. So having a ternary blend with slag and limestone and cement would be an interesting combination. You know, limestone gives you the better earliest properties and slag, if added to cement, acts as a pozzolonic material and gives you good laterate strengths. For the purpose of this research, we use ground granulated blast furnace slag. It has a D50 of 7.6, much finer than C150. And for the interground cement, we use C595, which has a D50 of 10.03 microns. C150, of course, has a D50 of 11.2 microns. We use four different limestones with different particle sizes to create the blended composition. So in all, we had three different replacement levels, 20%, 40%, and 50% different overall replacement levels. So we have blended cements, we have the interground cements, and we have binary OPC and slag mixtures. We designed the mixes such that the particle size distribution of the composite distribution is similar to that of the interground distribution. So limestone in all the blended compositions was 12.68%, which is the same amount of limestone present in C595. And we used all the available limestone sizes and optimized the particle size distribution so that the final particle size distribution of the blended and the interground mixture is the same. Coming on to microstructural modeling, so we developed uh, 3D representative volume elements using a stochastic particle packing model. So here I have shown three different mixtures. One is the OPC and slag binary, where the red particles are OPC particles, cement C150 particles, the blue are slag particles. In the blended 50% replacement, you have 50% C150, and then you have uh, an optimized composition of limestones, and you have slag. Limestone is shown in green. And here you have the interground, which is where you have the interground C595 coupled with slag. How do we generate this? Is We know the PSDs, particle size distribution of slag and cement. We discretize those PSDs to get the number of spheres for each different phase to fit in our microstructure model. And based on these microstructure models, we are able to predict some interesting properties of our microstructure. So here are some of the properties which we were able to extract from those microstructures and they are plotted as percentage of total replacement. So first is the average number of nearest neighbors. It characterizes the proximity of the reacting species. Ultimately what happens is at microstructure level, particles react to each other. So if a particle, like the proximity is more, so the reactivity will be higher. That's why you see when you have finer particles, you have higher reactivities. The other two factors which we have is the slag limestone contact fraction and the cement limestone contact fraction. Slag, we know, has a lot of aluminous content in that, of which there is a significant amount of reactive alumina, which can react with limestone to form your monocarboaluminates. And cement has the C3A phase, from where you can get the formation of monocarboaluminates, as well as limestone aids in the hydration of cement by providing nucleation sites. So these two factors are important microstructural parameters to understand the early age hydration. 
So as we see that as you increase the percentage level of total replacement, so as you increase the slag content, your slag limestone contact fraction goes up and we are able to find significant differences between the interground and the blended mixtures over here. So the reason for that is, you know, interground cement, although has the same amount of limestone content as the blended ones, the limestone in interground cement is much finer. So as I told before, the median size of C595 is 10.02 microns. And the median size of C150 is 11.2 microns. So you know that it is much finer. And plus, limestone being a softer face in the grinding process, it grinds to much finer than the limestone which we use to particle size match these blended mixtures. Similarly for the cement limestone contact fraction, so as you increase the replacement level, we are effectively decreasing the amount of cement in our systems, and that's why the cement limestone contact fraction goes down. However, you can still see that the intergrounds have a higher contact fraction as compared to the blended ones. So we conducted isothermal uh, calorimetry tests on all these mixes. What you can see here is the conventional peaks, silicate and aluminate peaks, we are able to identify them in all of the samples. And we can also see enhanced limestone activity in the presence of slag. So from this graph over here, we can see that as we increase the level of replacement, or as we increase the amount of slag, the slope of the acceleration phase increases. Also, the length of the dormant period reduces. One more interesting thing which we try to identify here is that there was a significant amount of deviation from the OPC curve in the blended and the interground systems, which was the existence of a tertiary peak, which occurred around 16 to 18 hours. So to find that peak out, if you can see this graph, you know, over here, there is a slight change. It's very deviation from the interground or OPC curve. So when you differentiate that plot, we are able to identify slag hydration peak, which occurs around 16 hours. And the first figure, whereas it indicates that the activity of limestone is increased in the presence of slag because of the alumina content from slag, limestone reacts more, and you have more AFMC phase formation. From the second one, we can see that the activity of slag is also affected by the presence of limestone. Because in a normal OPC blend, and for a blend where the content of slag is much lesser, you don't see this peak. To summarize the heat flow results from all the three different categories, the binary blends, which are represented as the plus sign, and the blended and the underground. So we plotted the peak heat flow values as well as the acceleration slope values over here. So we can see that both of them generally increase with the level of replacement. And we can attribute that to a positive influence because of the slag and limestone interaction in the systems. And they are negatively influenced by the dilution effect because you're actually reducing the cement content so you have a significant dilution effect. But overall, the slag limestone interaction dominates also, at 50% replacement level, we can see that the interground mixture has the highest values over here, followed by the blended ones and then the OPC mixture. These are the cumulative heat plots for all the different systems. So these are the binary blends, these are the interground blends, and these are the ternary blended systems with slag and the blended composition of limestone. We can see that all of the pastes have lower cumulative heat values as compared to OPC. These values are plotted as watt per gram of binder. So here, binder we have considered as OPC plus slag plus limestone overall. So that is why you can see that the values are gradually decreasing as you increase the replacement level. And that's the similar thing in all of the plots over here. Another thing over here which we can see is that the values, although they are decreasing, they are not decreasing proportionally to the amount of clinker we have in the system. And that is because of the reaction of limestone and slag at early ages. Now, moving on to compressive strength comparison. We did compressive strength starting from day 1 to day 56. And what you see is that early ages, the compressive strength reduces as a function of the replacement level, which is expected because you have less cement in the system. Then when you see the compressive strength values between day 3 and day 14, we see a kind of a trend reversal in most of the plots over here, like here and over here in the second plot. And in the first plot, it occurs at a later age because you don't have any limestone over there. We attribute that to, first of all, the later age reactivity of slag, which occurs after the diffusion phase of cement OPC starts, as well as the slag and limestone interaction and the reaction of limestone as well. To summarize the compressive strength values, we plotted them as a function of the clinker factor. So we define the clinker factor as the volume of cement powder in the dry mix to the total volume of the powder. We can see that the compressive strength values increase with the clinker factor at three days. 
At 56 days, the values are kind of invariant of the clinker factor. So even with a lower clinker factor, we can achieve comparable strengths to that of OPC. Coming on to results from thermal analysis, when we plot the normalized non-evaporable water content, we see that it increases with uh, the increase in slack content at early ages, but it's not proportional to the clinker content in the mixture. That is because of the slow reaction kinetics of slack. And we see that the increase in the non-evaporable water content is more significant at later ages, which is attributed to the hydration of slack, which forms a major component. Also, one thing to be noted is that the values for the interground systems are much higher than blended systems at early ages. And at later ages in this plot, this is the 28-day plot, you can see that the values are almost invariant of the type of intermixing over here. Plotting the normalized CH content, so we know that calcium hydroxide is consumed by the pozzolanic reaction of slag to form CSH. So when you plot normalized CH content, we can see that values are quite similar, which leads us to infer that the non-normalized CH values are much lower for the higher replacement levels, which tells us that there is an increased amount of reactivity due to the presence of slag in these mixtures. Also, we find out the consumed carbonate content, and we know that limestone reacts to form the monocarboaluminates. So we try to correlate the consumption of carbonate to the formation of the AFMC phase over here. So we can see that at early ages when we plot the consumed carbonate content, it increases with the replacement level at all ages, at three days as well as at 28 days. With, at early ages, it is because of the slag limestone interaction. And at later ages, limestone continues to react, so you have an increasing consumption of limestone over there. And when we calculate the percentage of AFMC phase form from the thermal analysis plots, we see that there is a direct correlation between the consumption of limestone in all of the mixes and the formation of the monocarboaluminate phase. In this plot, you can see that these are the filled circles. They are the values at three days. And the circles over here, they are the values at 28 days. So the consumed carbonate content increases with age, but you can also see that the AFMC phase consumption increases proportionally to the amount of limestone that is consumed in these systems. Coming on to post structure development, plotted porosities for all of these mixes over here. The binary blends, OPC, are in brown. The blended are in gray, and the undergrounds in blue. And this is the critical pore diameters for all of these mixes, which you get from mercury intrusion porosimetry. So we can see that uh, porosity increases with increase in the slag content in these mixes, which is evident because of the presence of slag and limestone, which hydrate less compared to OPC. But when we compare the critical pore diameters, we see that you have a pore size refinement over here because your critical pore diameters reduce as you increase the level of slag and limestone in these mixtures. The reason for what we attribute to the formation of denser calcium silicate hydrates, which is formed due to the hydration of slag. Also, we can note that the interground pastes have lower porosities as compared to the blended ones. One of the key reasons is that the limestone in the interground systems is much finer as compared to the limestone in the blended systems. Of course, like binary blends have the least porosities because you have more amount of total product that hydrates. You have only OPC and slag. You don't have any limestone over there. Coming on to the conclusions, we were able to identify a synergistic effect of slag and limestone. On one hand, where the consumption of limestone was increased because of the presence of slag and particularly the reactive aluminates in slag, the reactivity of slag was also increased in the presence of limestone. So there is that synergistic effect. Also, we were able to find out a linear correlation between the consumption of carbonates and the formation of the monocarboaluminate phase. And then with respect to the compressive strengths, we saw that at later ages, the strengths were invariant of the clinker factor. So you were able to get comparable strengths even by having less cement content. With respect to the porosities, we saw that there was a pore size refinement in the ternary blends containing limestone and slag. So that's it. Thank you. And I'd like to acknowledge my advisor, Dr. Neethlath, and the lab staff at ASU, and my colleagues, Kirk, Akash, Matt, and Vikram. Thank you.